lesson here for tonight is is to just kind of we're we're staying on the same track of just kind of repeating the same thing, making it work all around. So we need to get this guardrail to apply to the other side and then extrude the other direction. So we have a few ways of doing that again. Remember, right? We need to think like chess players in, in order to do this. So I could um, I could find the curve that's on the other side and then reconstruct a normal and send it off the opposite direction. Or I could use uh, the curve that's currently there and move it to the other side and then use the same normal and extrude it the other direction. Or I could take this geometry, the whole thing after it's been extruded, and then pop it over to the other side and just move it that direction. That's an option as well. Um, but there are some limitations to each one. Think of it this way. If I have to find that other curve, let's say I change the shape or construction of my base plane a little bit, then that curve might not share the same index anymore. So it's not really all that smart. Um, if, I have, uh, if I move the geometry to the other side, I need to move it 10 feet plus the thickness of the guardrail itself in order for it to sit flush on the outside. Um, which is not necessarily what I want because what if I change um, um, what am I thinking? Well, if I change the thickness, actually that could work because if I change the thickness of the guardrail then it would change as well back at the source. So that's kind of going to work all right. Actually, I kind of like that. <laughs> I was going to move the curve and reconstruct it, but I think what we're going to do is just take this whole geometry and move the whole thing over. Um, so that's going to be this one right here. And um, we're going to borrow this normal. But I'm getting to that point now, guys, where I'm starting to see a lot of, a lot of wires and I have a lot of ideas floating around the workspace. I don't like having a lot of wires connecting a lot of ideas. I like to use params to clean these things up and make each idea an independent thing. So um, this frame and that normal, I'm going to create params for that so that I can separate these ideas and I don't have to be grounded to having you know these wires connecting me back to everything. So I'm going to go to params, geometry, and vector. And I'm going to um, plug my normal in there and then rename this one base vector. Uh, sorry, base normal. Yeah, base normal. I'm also going to go back up into params and grab a... Um, there's a plain one on here somewhere. I thought there was a plane param or a frame. Yeah. Uh, that's weird. Well, I think we can just take geometry. That should work for frames. Yeah. Yeah, make it a geometry one. And I'm going to call this uh, base frame. And then you can you can just copy these and um, plug them in, make them wireless, and then go from there. And you're going to want to turn them off as well. So um, we've got normals and uh, frames that are both down here. So I'm just going to carry them down. And you know that the base normal is what we're using for the vector amplify. So you plug that in. That's fine. We're going to plug in base frame for each of these inputs. So I'm going to put one in that frame and one in this frame, and that's good to go. And last but not least is this curve right here. I'm going to clean that up by just calling it, um, I'll call it surface thickness, I guess, something like that. But that's a number. Okay, so I'm going to go up to primitive, and I'm going to use number, plug that in there and call this one um, walkway thickness. Copy paste, make it wireless, and then carry it down. Okay, so all that was was creating params for the base normal, 
the base frame and the walkway thickness so that I can start to clean these ideas up and make them a little bit more um, easy to work with. Similarly, I, I could do the same thing up here for the walkway um, extrusion, but they're, they're sort of tied to one another rather closely, so I'm going to leave them where they are for now. Let me move this in here. Move this idea down there. Whoops. Move this down there. Okay, now, what did I say I'm going to do? I'm going to take... Should I give you time? Yeah. All right. So the next step after this point, right, we just need to move it. So all that was that I showed you in the last five minutes was cleaning it up. Um, the next step is all I'm going to do is take this geometry. I'm going to move it the width of the, the platform plus the thickness of the guardrail. So I'm going to need to do some math again. But the key here is I'm just going to use under the transform tab, under the affine panel, I'm going, or not affine, sorry, Euclidean, I'm going to use move. And this moves an object along a vector. Which vector do you think we're going to use? Huh? What's like the, the most amazing vector that we created for this definition? We already used it like a bunch of times. The base normal. Because that base normal is extruding in all the same direction across the center line of this bridge. And it works now, you know, anyway. So we're using the base normal. Um, we're also going to need the, um, the amplify. So I'm going to go to vector, vector, and use amplitude. So the normal is the vector input, and then we're going to need a, an amplitude of a certain value, right? So that's where that math comes in. Um, we are going to borrow the 10 feet, that's this right here, and we're going to add the thickness with, of, the, um, of the extrusion, and that's this 6 inches right here. So um, let me just go to math. And um, operators, I'm going to add addition. And in order to keep this cleaner, I'm going to create a few more params for me to, you know, work with here. Um, if this is too many params for you, you don't have to do this. You can just kind of plug it in directly from the 10 and directly from this one right here. But um, I don't know. I like to keep it a little cleaner. So I'm going to go up here to... Um, Op, uh, params and primitive and use number and I'm just going to plug the 10 right in and call this one uh, walkway thickness copy paste make it wireless by now you guys are masters of that right You need to practice this, okay? So if you guys haven't mastered these params and like shortcuts and stuff, I would like you to go back through this video before Thursday and do it because I do it a lot. And you kind of need to know how it works to really understand how to follow through my definitions. Um, but anyway, we take this wireless here and we uh, bring it down there. So we have our walkway thickness. Then we're also going to use a similar param, a number, for our guardrail thickness. Okay, so this guardrail thickness, I'm going to create another wireless connection. You don't technically have to because it's right there, but I'm going to do it because I want to move it off to the side somewhere. So wire display, hidden, guardrail thickness. So then we just go through and we start plugging them all together, right? The, the geometry we are extruding, or sorry, the geometry we're moving is this, the guardrail. So I'm going to plug that into G, and it's going to make a copy of it like that first, but that's wrong. Um, so I just need to add my walkway thickness, which is 10 feet, to my guardrail thickness, which is 0.5 feet or 6 inches, 
to my amplitude and then plug that into T and there it goes on the other side. <laughs> so uh, here's, here's kind of the key guys, right? Now this model is fully parametric. So if I change the thickness of my guardrails, it's going to change it on both sides. So I can make them really thin, really thick, whatever I need for that one. I think in this um, bridge, it's actually pretty thick. So I'm going to leave it pretty thick. Okay. Similarly, I can change the um, width. And it's all going to just match perfectly. So likewise, um, and you guys don't have to do this right now, but I just want to real quick kind of go back to this base curve. Um, if I were to change this value here, um, I could, instead of that base curve right there, I could just do a um, arc three point. And I can do point, point, point. You guys don't have to do this. I just want you to see and understand. So I'm going to set one point there, set one point there, and set one point here. And then it's A, B, and C. See that curve? It's exactly the same as this curve. Well, yeah, it's exactly the same as that curve. So I could plug this in instead. That would be that right there. Okay, everything's still working pretty well. I have my arc-like curve. Well, if I decide to change this point, the whole definition is going to change with it. And I can still change the width. I can move it down, make it thinner. I can make the arms thinner. Yeah. So this is the kind of level of, of use that I want you to start aspiring to achieve. Okay. Um, and I know that it's still, it feels kind of simple still. But once you start getting into larger systems, like what we were reviewing before, once you start getting into like massive, you know, subdivisions for, for you know, handrail systems like this with, uh, you know, it doesn't have to be like a chicken wire, but in some cases it's full, it's like a full on, um, you know, parametric subdivision, something like that. Your structural systems that are all going to bend with it. All of those things can be fully parametric built off of a couple of key control points or curves. So that's, that's the goal here. And similarly, this one right here, we can achieve that very similarly as well. Okay. But baby steps. I know. So let's go back. I'm going to get you guys all caught up. Um, that's the last lesson for today. And then tomorrow, or Thursday rather, we're going to go back into the bridge and we're going to start to develop the armature above and the roof as well. Okay, and you'll see that all of this is going to be control point based. Questions before I pause to get you caught up and release those of you who are done.